Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. I'm your instructor Joy. Let me first play a tune for you. was a little beginning of Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto Second Movement Canzonetta. Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you very much for keeping um, coming back and subscribing and sending me kind questions, comments, donations here and also my Patreon page, booking lessons with me, volunteering with your time, sending me all these kind messages. I really, really appreciate. I feel overwhelmed with all your kind uh, support and it is nice to hear that all of you are um, enjoying violin playing. We all know violin playing can be beautiful and frustrating at the same time. And it's certainly not one of the easiest instruments, but, in, uh, but I encourage you to keep working on because I find it there are more beautiful things to experience from violin playing than the other ones. So this video will be an answer to a subscriber. This file, this is what's wondering how one could play this beautiful piano sound with a lot of expression and without having shaky bow. That's <laughs> three questions at once. Very, very good question. Thank you very much. And I thought it was a great topic to talk about because we all, no matter what level we are in, have to deal with shaky bow, piano sound and expressive sound, all three things. Okay, let's start with how to play piano sound. So, in order to play piano sound, soft sound, let's look into the simple physics of the bow. When you see that, the near the frog, there's a lot of part happening here, pretty much a thin stick. So, which means the lighter part is here, lighter part, easier to play, soft sound, whereas heavier part, rather loud. So, in general, use lighter part of the bow. That could be from the tip, all the way to the middle. Depends the context of the music, but that's pretty much a good place. Talking of the light weight, we also can make the bow light by tilting the bow, meaning that instead of using all hairs, just use a couple hairs on the side by tilting the bow hair. Make sure you, your hair is facing us, not the other way around by raising the wrist tiny bit. Once you make the bow light, and also the contact point where the hair touches should be closer to the fingerboard because if the contact point is not right, for example, near the bridge, it will whistle. We don't want that. So this is how we produce light bow and using less hair, lighter bow, and the correct placement of the bow. And one could often um, achieve that one just placing the bow in the middle. The common mistake a lot of violinists do is starting piano sound at the frog or trying to use whole bows. Even though it's not impossible to play soft sound, but it's harder. So apply, in my case, at the beginning, I started at the middle, at the middle part of the bow, so that I can go either way. And then I use it mainly in the upper half bow. It is easy to do. Now, so we know how to play piano sound. How do we avoid shakiness? This happens a lot whether it's forte or piano, but piano is special more. We're starting playing somewhere, all of a sudden, it shakes it. It's very annoying, isn't it? <laughs> Often it happens because the bow weight or bow speed is not correct. Um, so um, let's first understand why it happens, if not there are many millions of reasons. One of the main reasons. As we move away from wherever we started, let's say we start from the middle, as we go toward the tip, the bow gets lighter. And then we, if we do nothing, it, because the bow is lighter, the same support, the same, uh, um, same movement that we were, it was working in the middle part, which is slightly heavier than mid, uh, the tip, does not work anymore. So as you move the bow, you have to constantly readjust the right elbow for example, raise elbow slightly higher to apply the bow, uh, weight on the bow to keep the same weight. 
it's a slight if you do too much that becomes a little the other way it's too heavy we don't want that a slightly slightly higher yeah because as we go down we tend to uh, lower elbow tiny bit and that's when the bow loses its contact and start bouncing it yeah just keep the elbow a tiny bit higher to support or to keep the bow weight present when you go away from the from the frog or middle or when you go towards the lighter part towards the tip just simply raising that one second way of to avoiding bouncing bow is now let's say sometimes <clears throat> we love to uh, flatten the bow here a little more to give a little full, full sound for here like that but if you let's say yours uh, all of a sudden it's bouncing then what you do is you just tilt the bow by doing that one simply let's see if i can show in uh, same note as before so here i'm using fuller hair flatter hair all hair and then if i bounce it by pushing it by tilting it what i'm doing is i'm changing the physics of the the bow wanting to go away to the side therefore the bouncing stops right away like this yeah let's see if i can make it a little more clearer yeah see if you can try the one if it bounces just tilt it yeah but make sure you do it a little gradually so that there's no accent when you do that if you do suddenly it might be a little accent so you gradually that's one way okay one of many ways there are other ways but one of one of a quick and easy way to do last one how do we do expressive sound expressive sound is crucially important um it has to do with both hands both speed both weight and expressive vibrato matching vibrato um so let's talk about what is not expressive sound what is boring sound is when it's even speed, even weight, even vibrato. Sometimes we want that, like here. We want that kind of tone. But here, so we second time when it happens, we want to do a little more. want a little more uh, expressive a little more emotion there um how do we do that so if you it has to do changing the bow speed changing the bow weight and then vibrating with a matching type of vibrato in this particular musical context what i did was i had to play one bow for the d and two uppers for the next two d's We would think we have to use a whole bow and an equal half bow for the next two up bows, but I did not do that. To make a little more expressive sound and to make a little dynamic of crescendo, when I had to do two up bows, even though they're equally long, each one has been each one being one beat, I did not use equal half bow. I used very little bow for the first one, and then use a second for the second bit, the majority of the bow, so that I can have a little faster bow speed and weight. Therefore, I create a little more emotional tone like this. Now here, see I use only this much and the second one I go that way I can bring the bow speed uh, a little more and the weight and that makes create a little more emotional sound. If I don't, this is how it would sound. It is not bad but a little flat, a little emotionless. So that's what I like to do. So here, second time. next one I want to create a little more um, decrescendo but phrasing of each one so what I do is I do fast and heavy bow and slow down like this so it was kind of sound and then I vibrate with a white one that matches it yeah, there you have it so this is 
is one of the beautiful pieces when it comes to romantic tone. Tchaikovsky has so many things to offer. I hope you can try it yourself and I hope you can try yourself to fix so that you have a beautiful expressive piano sound that's steady and beautiful. Yeah, I wish you all happy new year and happy uh, violin playing. I wish you all wonderful, many, many wonderful moments with the violin playing. Even though sometimes it gets frustrating, I wish you all a strong strength and keep doing because that's the one of the biggest key to get it. Happy violin playing. Hope to see you again. Bye bye.